everyone. In today's video, we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. As you can tell, I'm sitting at our desk and I've got my microphone out, just like I do when I record my Foxygen videos. Well, the reason being is because I have learned recently that a lot of you have a hard time finding free campsites. And there are a lot of resources I use to find boondocking locations. And I wanted to not just share what resources I use, but actually show you step by step how I use them and what I look for in a free campsite. Now, we've made a video in the past detailing how we use these, but at the time I didn't have a way to actually show you. So all I did was explain what apps, websites, and how I use them, and maybe what extra resources I might look at. But today I'm going to be going in and showing you exactly what I look for, what the websites look like, and all that fun stuff. Now I am going to be mentioning a lot of websites that I use. I'm also going to be mentioning a couple websites and a couple apps that I would like to use. And I just want to let you guys know that this website or this video is not in any way sponsored by any of the websites I'm about to mention throughout this video. However, today's video is sponsored by 3in1. Really quick, I want to tell you guys about a product that we own and use regularly. It is 3in1's Slide Out Silicone Lube. Now, for those of you that follow our channel regularly, you may be wondering, why do we use slide out lube if we don't have a slide out? Well, the reason is because this is actually a really great multi-purpose dry lube. So let me show you how we use it. The main thing we use the slide out silicone lube for is our stabilizer jacks. Over time, these become kind of difficult to, you know, bring them up and put them back down. And also they get so screechy. It literally sounds like nails on a chalkboard. It's awful. So we use this. The way we use it is we put the little straw out and then we go in here and we have three spots we spray. We spray right here, we spray right here, and we spray back here. And then when we're done spraying, we just bring them up a little bit and then bring them back down just to make sure that we really work that lube in there. And that's it. Now they won't squeak and they're way easier to put up and back down. The X shocks we use between our tires here use the same mechanism that our stabilizer jacks do. And just like our stabilizer jacks over time, they can become very difficult to crank in and back out. So we use this lubricant in the same three spots as the stabilizers here, here, and up here. And that makes them much easier to crank in and out. The last thing we use this lubricant on is our awning. Now these have all been exterior things that we use this lubricant on. The reason being is because it's actually a dry lube. Even though it sprays on wet, once it dries, it doesn't attract dirt or grime and it still lubricates whatever joint you put it on. Now obviously that's excellent for all these outdoor components, including slides, you know, if we had one, but we don't. So the reason that I use this on the awning is because occasionally when it needs lubricated, as we're rolling the awning back in, it'll start bouncing, shaking the whole RV and like making this like weird, like junk, 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 I don't know. It's a weird noise. Anyway, it's really loud and annoying. So we'll spray this on all of the rotating joints on here and I'm gonna go ahead and spray it right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let David do the rest because it is his job. Gee. Thanks. You're welcome. Let's get back to finding some campsites. I want to get right into the video today and show you exactly how I find the campsites. But first, I want to tell you that I am going to challenge myself because in this video, I'm going to look for free campsites that I've never been to before in places we've never been to before. And hopefully I can show you more along the lines of what my thought process is. And I have picked Denver, Colorado and Asheville, North Carolina. Um, around Asheville, North Carolina is going to be really difficult. Um, so Denver, Colorado, I think is near Pikes Peak, which we want to visit someday. And then um, Asheville, North Carolina near there is Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And it's very close to where David and I had our honeymoon, but we rented a cabin up in the woods. So um, I'm interested to see what kind of free camping is out there because I would love to go back and camp the way that we camp. So let's get right into it. We're going to start in Denver, Colorado. The three main resources I use when finding free campsites is a website called freecampsites.net, compendium.com, and then Google Maps. And I know that Google Maps may just kind of be thrown in there, but I actually rely really heavily on Google Maps because we have solar and the satellite view on Google Maps can really tell me whether or not we're going to get full sun or partial sun in 
a potential campsite that we're thinking about. Now, I almost always do my campsite finding on my laptop. I would love to look more on my phone, but I feel it's really cumbersome because I like to have a lot of tabs open because I like to open all of the campsites around an area first. So let's get right into that. And I'm going to start near Pikes Peak in Denver, Colorado. I always start with freecampsites.net. It is by far my favorite app to use. Um, you can download the app on your phone, but all it does is just open their website. And um, I do find it more cumbersome to use on my phone, so I still like to use this on a desktop. So we're gonna go to Denver, Colorado. Starting here near Denver, Colorado, in the Pike National Forest is where I think I would want to stay. I can zoom in here and I see about five campsite review locations not too far from each other. So if I click on this one, it brings up this little white bar. And real quick here, I can see the name and where exactly it's located. And then I can see the review rating. It also starts to give a little bit of like description on how to get there. And every single one of these should have something like that. One thing I look for before I open any of these is if it even has any reviews. I do not go or I do not plan to go to any campsite that has zero reviews. We like to find campsites that already have a review. There are plenty of pictures. I know exactly what we're getting into before we get there. And then if for some reason we don't like the campsite once we get there, but it's good enough, David and I will drop the trailer, drive the truck around and see if we can find something even better that we might like more. So all of these have reviews. So I'm gonna go ahead and open them in a new tab. All right, this first one is Buffalo Creek area in Pike National Forest. You can see that the road in is dirt, one mile from a paved road, so that's not bad, and you can stay here 14 days. One thing that I really like about free campsites is it tells you right away based on how many reports as to whether or not you may or may not have signal there. Here you can see that Verizon, the best one it looks like is 2G or 3G, which is not okay for us. There's a good chance though that I won't find a campsite that has great signal. See, this one right here shows Verizon 4G. They had three bars of it. So it really depends on the person, maybe how good their signal is, maybe what they're using exactly, and whether or not it was boosted. It's hard to go by exactly what everybody says. There have been a couple places where online it shows that it has, you know, three or four bars of Verizon 4G coverage, and we get there and it has zero. So... You definitely have to take that with a grain of salt. So I'm going to find one that seems to have Verizon wireless signal that is more accurate. So this one, it says Verizon 4G LTE, but this X right here, I think means that it's not usable. So this one only has one Verizon um, review and it shows that it's not usable. So even though it's quiet and peaceful and this picture right here looks like it would be, you know, a nice open area, we could camp anywhere and we could definitely get solar. This is still one that I'm just going to kind of keep off to the side. Um, it's probably not going to be the main one that I try and focus on getting to. So let's go and look at a couple of these other ones. One bar of Verizon 4G. That is usable. Let me see here. T-Mobile 4G, AT&T. All right. I don't actually see anybody saying that they had Verizon. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. Now, some of you may be wondering, why is the signal so important? David and I work on the road. We run all of our YouTube travels on the road, we run our website on the road, and we have to have access to those things. Our website likes to randomly go down sometimes, and I need to be able to fix that right away. So for us, the main thing, main thing when finding a campsite around an area we want to explore is that it has to have signal. We've been to a few places, but it's been a while now where the campsite that we were staying in doesn't have a great signal. It has very minimal signal and it's not something that's super usable, so we'll drive into town, but it has to at least have some sort of signal for us. So, so far, this one looks really good. It's rampant range road. It's dirt about five miles from a paved road. It has a lot of campsites and you can stay there 14 days, which is great. The only thing I'm noticing so far is that there's no review of cellular signal. It looks like there's probably no cellular signal at all whatsoever, which would be really cool. And this looks like it'd be a really pretty place to camp, but unfortunately we have to have signal. So this is one that I would pass on, but it may be something that one of you are more interested in. So what I'm gonna talk about before I get into exactly what campsite I would pick is I'm gonna go through what it says on this campsite review because it looks like 
Um, there are a lot of reviews on it. There are a lot of pictures and I want to show you what I look for in a good review. So even though this review is really short, I actually really like this one. It says they stayed here for four days. They said what site they stayed on. Um, it has a big rock and a firing. So they're being a little descriptive on the site. Um, they're explaining that it got busier on the weekend, which is obviously really normal for most campsites. Even the ones that are free in the middle of nowhere, you're going to have more people driving on the roads around that time. Um, they explain that you can see the rest of the sites past this one if you keep driving down. Um, they looked fairly similar. And they said they you have to go slow because the road is rough and washboard. That is something that I really appreciate someone sharing with us. Because even though we don't mind getting to an area and not knowing the condition of the road ahead of time, it is nice to know that the road is passable <laughs> because otherwise we can't go down there. But um, knowing that the road is rough but washboardy means that we will probably still be able to get down there just fine. They said they would definitely stay there again. Another thing that I always look for in a campsite review is what they stayed in. So here you can see this person stayed in a passenger vehicle and a tent, but they would stay there again. Now, if all of the reviews are nothing but passenger vehicles and tents, I will not attempt to go there. Unless one of the reviews says that any size rig could get there. And that's really important to us because we're not very big, but we're not very small either. And there are definitely lots of rigs that are way bigger than us. So if someone thinks, even if they have a smaller rig, that any size rig could get there, then, you know, I, I don't negate that fact. I think that they're probably being very truthful. I've been looking at plenty of reviews online throughout the last two years, and the reviews that I find the least helpful are people that don't tell you anything about the campsite. You know, um, like this one, um, I'm sure this person is a very nice person. Someone found their review helpful, but I would not have found it helpful. It says, I have been camping here for about 20 years. I love it. Now, I get that someone that's been there really often might love it, but I want to know facts about the campsite. I want to know, you know, how many there are, how easy they are to get to, if the neighbors were respectful. But even then, if someone says, my neighbors were really loud, you can't really think that that is always going to be the case for everybody that ever camps there. You have to know that that was their experience. It might not be your experience. So you really have to take the reviews with a grain of salt and really be picky as to what reviews you believe and which, which reviews you don't. So one thing I really like about this campsite um, is that all of this, all of this tells you more information, how to get there. And even this one has the most information I've ever seen anywhere where it says who the campsite is managed by. Normally it just says, you know, up here what the management is. And this is actually a state park. Whereas down here, it then has additional information. I've actually never seen that before, so that's really cool. Like I said, this looks like it would be a great area to camp, but David and I need signal, so it's off the list for us. So this is a different campsite review, and I want to give you an idea of what I would consider a bad review. And this one right here is something I would consider as a bad review. It says, scary, freaky people who trash the place. Are these the now primary users of this once great spot? Families, be aware. Let's take it back. And this person rants about how there was a lot of noise pollution. People were loud. People were partying late at night. And you know what? I'm sure that they didn't have a great experience. And that's obviously why they put this review up there. However, this is not something I find helpful in finding a campsite review. Just because this person had this experience there doesn't mean that it's the experience of everyone that's going to be camping there. And so this is a campsite review where, I mean, they even use the word hooligans. This is definitely a campsite that we still wouldn't go to because it is a more open area. People can camp really close to you. David and I like to find singular campsites that nobody else can camp in with you out away from other campsites. So we probably wouldn't pick this anyway, unless it was one of the only places that had signal. Um, but this review right here is not something that would deter us from going there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this campsite called Buffalo Creek Area in the Pike National Forest, and here's why. 
It's one mile from a paved road. You can stay 14 days. It gives you pretty good directions there. Also says that there are various dispersed campsites along both sides of the road until you reach the campground. So you can camp along the road before you get to the campground, meaning you can have... I mean, you'll, you'll probably be right off the road, so you'll probably have quite a bit of traffic driving by, but you won't have people camped super close that way, I'm pretty sure. And a lot of the pictures look really good. You can see that this person in an SUV got up there just fine. Here's someone camping in the snow, which is really cool. There's some really pretty views. And then you can see here that the road isn't awful. So I think that's something that we could definitely get up. Now, this is the one that I very first started with. This is the only review that says that the Verizon 4G LTE coverage was pretty good. She doesn't have the exact GPS coordinates on exactly where she stayed, but I'm assuming that she actually stayed in the campground. And then there are some AT&T reviews showing that there's good signal there. So this is one that David and I would probably put off to the side. And if the campsite we end up really wanting is full, then this would be probably option number two. All right, since those five campsites weren't all that great, I'm gonna go ahead and look at a couple of these down here too. Okay, here's an example of one of the five that I opened. It doesn't have any reviews yet. There are a couple pictures which look really nice but I really need to know whether or not there's Verizon signal. So this is one that I probably wouldn't go to. So of those five that I opened, these three are ones that I'm going to look at. And of these three, because so far their signal looks really great, I'm probably going to pick one of these. So looking at this campsite, Middle Ramp Rampart Road, I think is how it's pronounced. It says the road in is gravel, six miles from a paved road, which isn't awful for us. There are 30 or more campsites at this location and the maximum RV length is 35 feet. Now our RV is just under 25 feet, but with our truck, we're over 50 feet long. So what I need to know personally is it's is it the total length of your rig or is it just the campsite itself can't hold anything longer than 35 feet? So this is run by the Forest Service. So this would be a national forest campsite. I'm not 100% sure exactly what this means. It says you may stay any at Middle Rampart Road. I'm assuming that means any amount of time, but I seriously doubt that. I bet the limit is somewhere between 14 and 18 days. That's pretty typical for a national forest. So seeing some of these views, these look really pretty. You can see there's obviously snow up there most of the year. And it has an awesome, awesome view of Pikes Peak. What I really look for in these, though, isn't just the pretty views, but what the campsites look like. I would really like to know how nice the campsite is, how big it is, how easy the road is to get to, all that fun stuff. Okay, so right here I can see this campsite looks really big. So I would assume that David and I in our rig would have no problem getting up there. So this is definitely one that I want to check out. The Verizon signal looks really good. There are three bars of Verizon 4G. And this person says that they loved this campsite. They have beautiful views. It says the road getting there is pretty rough, so take it slow. We have been on some really rough roads before, so I'm not too worried about that. It says that it's a little windy. But that also means no mosquitoes, so that's good. Let me see. Take it slow. The camping is unmarked, but if you pass the sign for the Pike Forest Campground, which is a paid campsite, keep going. You'll see an open lot a few minutes farther on, on the right-hand side of the road. And a few minutes past that, there is a steep road traveling up, which is where we stayed. The higher free campsite is better, protected with trees. The first open gravel patch does not offer much shade or protection from the elements. That's fine by us. We would probably stay at the first camping site on the right-hand side before you go up the big hill um, because we would want, you know, nice open skies for solar. So this person, I really liked this campsite. I found it very helpful. Or this campsite review, I found it very, very helpful. The only thing that it's lacking is it doesn't say what she stayed here in. And that is important to me because up here it says maximum length is 35 feet. Let me see if anybody else stayed in anything. Okay, this person stayed in a 24 foot long trailer, which means that they pulled it with a vehicle. Okay, th so most of the review is basically about their experience, but here at the end is actually really nice. It says we stayed with a 24 foot travel trailer and we're 47 feet in length but some bigger rigs parked next to us. 
So that makes me feel really good. This is probably going to be the number one site that we pick. I know that that area is really busy, so I'm not too worried about other people parking nearby. It seems like it would be a pretty private place. It's not in a campground, but it's in the National Forest, which is really nice. So I'm going to pick this one for now, and I'm going to go ahead and close these other ones. I don't even want to look at them right now because I like this one so much. And then so I have this one. This middle rampart road is going to be the main campsite we pick. If for some reason it's really packed or we don't like it when we get there, then this Buffalo Creek one is going to be our second option in hopes that it does have signal. Okay, now that I have picked this middle rampart road, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to campendium.com and see if they have more pictures. So here on free campsites, I can see that this middle rampart road is right here. It's really close to Colorado Springs, so in order to find it on Campendium, I'm just going to type in Colorado Springs. So unfortunately, Oh, sorry. Unfortunately, it looks like there are no campsite reviews. It's not even got a marker on their map right here. I can tell I'm in the right spot because there's this little lake right here and it's near US 24. Here's US 24 and here's the little lake. There's no review right there. So unfortunately, Campendium doesn't have any reviews of this free campsite, but that's okay. I'm going to go over and I'm going to go to Google Maps. I'm going to copy and paste this GPS location here. I just copy and paste. If you'll notice in a lot of my campsite reviews, I include the GPS coordinates down at the bottom left. I also include them in the description so it's easier to copy and paste them. All you do is you copy it and you just literally paste it right into Google Maps. You hit enter and it will show you exactly where that is. So I have exactly where that is. I want to see the satellite view. So a lot of the times the exact GPS coordinates aren't exactly exact, <laughs> but as you can see zooming in, not only can you see that someone has pulled off right here, here's the GPS exactly, but down this little side road, you can see there are people camping here, there are people camping here, 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 all the way down into here. So I'm not 100% sure if this is a campground. If it is, I'm gonna continue going down this road and just see if there's anything else I like. I can see right here that this looks like a really nice pullout. David and I, in order to face south for our solar panels, we would just have to pull right in and we can get the trailer nice and straight. That looks like a nice spot we could camp. Here's another massive spot right here. And down this road, it looks like there's quite a bit of camping. So what this tells me is that even if I can't find a place at the exact GPS coordinates, I can keep going down this road and you can see there are obviously some trailers down this way. They all got down there just fine. And that is why I like using Google Maps so much. I can pull up satellite view. All of these roads have little camping areas on them. Here's another one right here. Oh, that's actually a trailhead. I'm sure you can't actually camp there. And there's more camping here, maybe down this way. There, there looks like there are a ton of cool places that you can camp out here. So this is definitely one that I would end up using. And if I want directions to Colorado Springs to see just how far away it is to town, this shows me it is 26 miles if you go in this way. That looks like it's gonna be the easiest way anyway. So if you wanted to go into Colorado Springs, it looks like it's 26 miles. It'll take you about 50 minutes. However, there's this little woodland park. Looks like it's a closer town. So let me see here. It is only 8.6 miles from Woodland Park. So I now know that there is a pretty close town. There's a ton of camping nearby. Worst case scenario, we drive nine miles into Woodland Park for signal or to upload a video or whatever we need. And then the last thing I need, which is a campsite or it's a website that I use that I don't think I've ever really talked about, but it's called rvdumpsites.net. It's also ran by freecampsites.net and I really, really like it. So let me see here. What was that? Woodland Park. Woodland Park, Colorado. So this is a website that I, this is not the correct, why is this in New Jersey? <laughs> Woodland Park, Colorado, there we go. <laughs> Let's go to the right place. Okay, so I have found here, this is about where the campsite is, is right in here, and you can see that there are some dump stations nearby. Here's one, it's called Mueller State Park. It says, the dump station is not available unless you camped at the state park. That's not always necessarily true. And I don't see 
This is from last year. It's been about a year now. There's a good chance that if you call the state park that they may say that there's a certain fee. There are some state parks, though, that say no, that you can't come unless you've camped there. Now, there are, it looks like a couple paid dump stations. The The red means that it's paid. This one says completely adequate dump station, $5 to use a dump station, or free at, a last eight gallons of, at at least eight gallons of fuel purchased. Fuel is a fair price. That actually sounds like an excellent deal. David and I almost always get fuel whenever we go to a gas station if they have a dump station. So that looks like it'd be a great place to to uh, fill up our water and dump, and it's not that far from the campsite. Like I said, it was about 28 miles, so that's super easy and convenient. And then obviously Colorado Springs is going to have everything we need, shopping, propane, all that stuff. But I really like to know on our way to a campsite where we're going to be filling up and dumping our water at. So far, finding a free campsite near Denver, Colorado hasn't been too difficult, but I'm going to challenge myself even farther, and I'm going to try and find a free campsite somewhere around Asheville, North Carolina. All right, so here around Asheville, North Carolina, I am not really sure exactly, like, let's say I just kind of wanted to visit the mountains and the area around Asheville, North Carolina. For me personally, because I know that there are a lot of things to do just over the mountains in Tennessee, I might want to try and find something a little closer to over here. So to get it to look on the map here on free campsites a little closer to Tennessee, I just click on the map, it puts a little star, that's where I clicked. So I'm going to actually look over here near the Cherokee National Forest. It looks like there's a place here in Tennessee. I'm going to go ahead and just open all the ones that are green. The green means that they're free. The red, I believe, means that they are slightly paid in some way. I think it is like under $12, which is still really affordable. Don't get me wrong. I'm just showing you what I look for in a free campsite. All right. So first thing I have noticed is not a single one of these campsites have any 4G signal. So, because of that, I honestly would probably just pick one that I find is really pretty and then drive into the nearest town and work from there. Um, I know already because I've been to Hot Springs, North Carolina, that this area is beautiful. David and I loved having our honeymoon there. So for me, it's totally worth it to find a campsite that doesn't have signal, but maybe has some not so heavy tree coverage so that we could at least run off of our solar. So first thing I've noticed is that this campsite or this free camping area says that the maximum RV length is 25 feet and all of the reviews say that everybody stayed there in a passenger vehicle or a passenger vehicle and a tent. So I probably wouldn't end up staying here, but I would like to leave it on the list as something to maybe drive down and check out later because it looks like there's some really pretty views at the end of the road. So this area looks really, really pretty, but it looks like there's just based on the two pictures, which I wish there were more pictures, it looks like the um, foliage coverage is really high. And I would assume that that's probably the, pay the case at most of these campsites. But this is the only one so far. I've only looked at the first two, but this one says that someone got there with a 28 foot long class C. All right, so the one thing that this person recommends the most is to stop at the very first campsite. Um, it's on the right hand side, it's huge. They had to clean it up a little bit, but to be completely honest, I believe that the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is the most visited, or at least recently it was one of the most visited in one of the recent years. So one thing they do say is not to take an RV past this site because the road is down to one lane and it's not gravel, which doesn't bother us. We've been down plenty of one lane roads and, you know, we pull off as far as we can. Um, so that doesn't really scare me, but what would scare me is picking this as a campsite and then it being full. So I would keep this one off to the side just in case. And um, that does mean that there's only one campsite there that we could probably get into. So I'd like to find one that maybe the road itself has a couple more options for a uh, rig our size. On this, on this campsite review, it says that someone stayed here in an eight foot long trailer, but they block off access to vehicles on the campsites themselves. So you'd have to pack in a tent. So that one's not going to be good for us. So far, just literally based on what the top of this one says, we honestly would probably pick this one in the end. It says the road in is paved. Paint, Paint Creek Corridor is open. They have dump sites always. The campground is open from April to 
um, November, there are 16 to 29 campsites. Maximum RV length is 40 to 60 feet, and you can stay 14 days. That sounds perfect to us. Um, plenty of room for us to get in there. Um, there are some directions right here. It says the main campground in the area is a small fee. It's close to the entrance of a park. There are some free drive-up spots as well. It said, this person says that it's a pretty popular area. So it looks like Paint Creek Campground Cherokee National Forest has a website where you can see how much it costs. I'm going to see how much the campground costs. Okay, so their website doesn't work. <laughs> That's great. Um, that's from way back in 2013, so I'm not super surprised. The most recent review is from 2015, so I'm definitely wondering if this camping area is even available anymore, but it wouldn't hurt to go and check it out. I don't see any pictures, which makes me wonder. Um, maybe this was before they allowed a lot of uploading of pictures or something along those lines, but it seems like it would be a really nice place to camp. I just don't know if it's even active anymore. So if I close that one too, that leaves me with nothing. <laughs> so because of that, if I really wanted to check out this area or even this area, I would just kind of look around and see if I can find any other places to stay. Here's some near the Pisgah National Forest. Um, so let me look into some of these. Okay, of all the campsites that I open, most of them don't have any signal. So that doesn't bother me. So I'm going to look and see if any of them have um, a size limit first. All right, I have decided to pick two of the however many I had open. And this is probably going to be our number one option. It's Victor Fields Dispersed Camping. It's owned by the Forest Service. The road in is gravel. There are one to five campsites. Maximum RV length is unlimited and you can stay 14 days. There are some extra descriptions of this campground area. Um, and it looks like there is quite a bit of camping available here. I wish that there were pictures though, because it doesn't seem like anybody's providing pictures of this camping area, which is fine. Based on just looking at the campsite reviews, I have come to the conclusion that we will probably have to run our generator the entire time while visiting here, but this is the one that I would probably end up picking. And then this one would be a number two option. Um, it looks like there are just a couple pull-offs along the road that we could probably back our trailer into and then park our truck next to it and um, it has some pretty good reviews saying it was pretty easy to find um, it looks like only one person provided the pictures and having just that one little pull off site option um, doesn't really deter us from wanting to camp there I mean it does mean that the campsite will probably be pretty tight but other than that it's no big deal the one thing I really like about this one is that this camp they uh, mentioned in the campground review itself that showers are available at a nearby campground for five dollars and there's a free rv dump station and it even tells you where it's at so this one seems really nice um there's no signal here which i'm not surprised by but this is probably the one we would end up picking it's called south south tow river dispersed camping and then this victor fields would be another option too. I honestly, between the two, I don't know which one I would end up picking in the long run. They both look really nice. Um, maybe Victor Fields would probably be number one and then South Tow River would be number two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to campendium.com and see if they have any additional pictures. Okay, so surprisingly, this Victor Road um, is an available campsite review on Campendium, which makes me feel really good. Um, it does say that there's no Verizon signal. I don't see um, really too many campsite reviews. There's just one. And they did post a lot of pictures, or at least people have posted a lot of pictures, which makes it look really pretty. I really love this area. Um, there are obviously some pull-offs, some big camping areas it looks like you can camp in. So that makes me feel really good. Um, I'm really glad that I found some additional pictures here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in these GPS coordinates over in Google Maps. And here we go. I'm going to pull up satellite view. See if I can find anything that has, you know, nice open clearing so that we can get some solar. It looks right here, or it looks like right here, that maybe we could camp in here. But if I had to guess, because it looks like it's been, you know, like raked really nice, you might not be allowed to camp there. So just like I thought, 
it looks like everywhere along here is just super dense in trees. That's not that big of a deal. I can see some people camped up this way. So it, there are obviously a lot more camping spots up along the road a little farther. Um, that's somebody's house, so <laughs> you definitely want to make sure that before you go down a road, especially if it's just a one-lane road, that you don't end up in someone's driveway. So it looks to me like we would probably end up camping somewhere along this road and just find a nice spot, even if it's shaded, to pull into. I hope that showing you my exact step-by-step -step process on how I find free campsites even though I stumbled through it a little bit because they're places I've never been to before, but I wanted to actually show you what I look for, why I look for it, and, you know, examples of good reviews and bad reviews, examples of campsites that have a lot of reviews and no reviews, all that stuff. So, I hope that I have given you maybe the confidence to look through different websites, find things that make you think, yeah, I'd like to put this on my list of possibly a place to stay when I go and try and camp here. The biggest thing I can tell you is that when I look for free campsites at a new location that we've never been to before, I don't know the area, I pick more than one campsite as a potential place to stay. So for example, here around Asheville, North Carolina, I know it's probably pretty far away, um, but this is an example of I'm definitely picking two camping areas and hoping that at least one of them is good. Back when we were traveling out east in Vermont and New Hampshire, this was like two years ago now, I picked three, four, even five campsites to make sure that I had a lot of options because the chances of a place that we were originally hoping to get to being either full or unable to for us to get there were actually pretty high. Out west, it's a lot easier to find free camping. There are a lot less developed areas, meaning like big cities and stuff like that. Finding just empty land to camp in is actually a lot easier out west, but I wanted to really challenge my myself and show you guys exactly what I look for. So that's why I really liked showing you guys out near Asheville, North Carolina, because I thought that would be really interesting. Now, as you can see in this video, the main website I use is freecampsites.net. I also use rvdumpsites.net as a way to find free dump stations and free water. And then I use campendium.com to find extra pictures because campendium.com seems to be a lot more um, paid campsite focused versus free campsite focused. And then I use Google Maps to see overhead views of the way, you know, a campsite is laid out that I might be going to, which direction might be south when we first pull in, and whether or not it's even open to the sun for us. I don't only use these three campsite or these three resources though. I I plan on starting to use a new app called Free Roam. Um, it's available on the App Store, I believe. I used to use an app called All Stays, which I actually loved that app, but it's not available for Android anymore. It is available on the Apple Store, though, and I believe it's only 10 bucks, which is super affordable. I loved that app. It was really helpful in also finding free campsites. It was also really helpful. Hi, Butters. <laughs> It was also really helpful in finding like repair places. I could find some dump sites. It was a nice place to find places to overnight really quick. So I really liked all states for that um, option. I like to pull up the forest service websites, but I can't always find the maps that have the little dots on it that show what roads you're allowed to disperse camp off of and where those dispersed campsites are. There are some national forest websites that will show you where, hi butters. <laughs> Um, some free dispersed campsites are. For example, Joshua Tree National Park, they let you know that there are BLM campsites on the south side of Joshua Tree and on the north side of Joshua Tree. They even show you like ma a map of it on their website. Um, it's a little buried, but it is there. Worst case scenario, I've only used it a couple times. I have had to use BLM websites and I've had to call places, but unfortunately there are a lot of people when I call them, whether it's a forest service person or a BLM service, BLM management, or I don't know, Bureau of Land Management person that I call and they don't know where all of their free campsites are. They don't even know what roads that you can camp down off of. So that's not always the case, but I have found that pretty often. So I don't rely on that. I don't rely on contacting the forest service or um, BLM 
people to find out where you can camp because a lot of times I don't actually know. Now, another thing that I don't use because it is mine, but we actually have on our website, which I will show you really quick. On our website, we have a campsite review section. Now in the campsite review section, I have a lot of options. So I have campsite reviews by state. And if you click on this, it'll pull up a nice map and you can click on the state and it will pull up all campsite reviews from that state. Now these are places we've already been. So obviously I don't use this as a resource to find new places I've never been before. But if you guys are interested in places that we have camped, this is an option you can use if you're interested. I don't have a lot of reviews in each of these states, but I do have reviews in each in each of these states. You can also go and find just BLM campsites, just national forest campsites, just national park. We have a couple RV park ones, but not very many. And then um, other dry camping sites. So if you are interested in places that we've been in the past, you can find those on our website right here. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching my video on how exactly I find free campsites. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. I am sure that I am not the only one that uses a lot of different websites and a lot of different resources to find free campsites. And for those of you that have different resources or if you've used the Free Roam app, which I hope to use in the future, um, you know, leave your comments in the description below. I'm sure that there are other people out there that would like more resources than even what I have shown to help them find free campsites. Plus, if there's something out there that's really cool that I'm not using, I wanna know too, you know? So anyway, I will catch you guys later and thanks for watching. Bye.